Yes, I think the origin of this book uh, came very, very early because, uh, you know, a for a child in the Bronx, the first thing you remember, the first thing you know is that George Washington is the father of your country, he's the father of the country, he never tells a lie, and somehow I needed desperately to have a father. So I always, in my dreams, George Washington, even if he wasn't perfect, was my father, but in everything I read about George Washington, he never had a sexual life. You, you never felt uh, that he was a man of deep passion. And I discovered that he indeed, as I dug deeper, he was in love with a woman when he was very young, uh, in, in love with a married woman, his neighbor, and uh, nothing ever came of it, even though he wrote her love letters. And it's from this the germ of this story that really the book came to me and much later uh, in that I wanted to celebrate George Washington but didn't want to write a novel about him, just a novel where he would appear. Well, I researched everything I could about the Revolutionary War, uh, about the, the central figures of the war, about Washington himself. Um, what, what happened w was very unusual for me because I had a new publisher, Norton, and a new editor, Bob Weil. And for the first time in my life, he asked me to rewrite the book because I had never uh, before even had had one line changed. And all the editors I'd had, they never asked me to do anything. So, and he wanted a complete rewrite of the novel. And I rewrote the whole novel, and he wanted me to rewrite it again. So it took, with all the rewrites, it took about two and a half years. Which is quite a long Yeah, it's time. a long time. And with Emily Dickinson, the novel I, I just finished, it was even longer because I had to rewrite it even one more time. He was very specific about what he felt worked in a scene and whether scenes should go together where the sections should go together. And sometimes uh, I would talk about a character, let's say, whether it's Emily Dickinson or Johnny One-Eye, and he would say, don't you think this would make a great scene? And then I'd think about it, and I'd say he's absolutely right. And also, he gave me the format of the novel, because in the original version, Johnny goes off to Canada and stays there and doesn't come back to New York. And, and Bob Weil felt that the book should begin and end with the revolution, so that each section should be each year of the revolution. So I had to bring him back from Canada and get him involved in the revolution again. And I think he was absolutely right. And the same thing is happening because I'm just writing a novel about Berlin uh, during the Second World War. And even before I've shown it to him, I realized that the novel shouldn't extend beyond the war, should remain within the context of World War II. So it's interesting that one's editor or the editor's dream can very often edit, enter your head even before he looks at the manuscript. You know.